Let's do some experiments with the berry dye found in Color Nature food colors. Now the ingredients list for the berry dye states that it contains beet juice color. And beet juice color contains a lot of the molecule betanin. Now betanin is a charged molecule, so therefore it should dissolve well in water through ion dipole forces. I have some water over here. I'm just going to add a little bit of the berry dye to that. Give that a little swirl. And indeed, we see that the dye dissolves well in the water, which is consistent with the dye containing the molecule betanin. Let's try the same thing in some isopropyl alcohol. Now, isopropyl alcohol is fairly nonpolar, and so I would expect betanin not to be able to dissolve as well in the nonpolar isopropyl alcohol. And indeed, that's what's observed. Now I can see some particles that have been dispersed throughout the alcohol, giving it a, a red color, but those are large particles. We can kind of see that those are not dissolving well because the light is not passing through this, whereas in this case, light does pass through because it is indeed a solution that's been made. Now betanin is also an acid-base indicator. So we would expect this berry dye solution, which we think contains betanin, to also act as an acid-base indicator. And that's what we're going to test right now. So to this first flask, I'm going to add a solution that is at pH 4. And we see that the pink color is maintained in an acidic solution. To this second flask, I'm going to add a solution that's at pH 10. Oh wow, you see a nice violet color develop. And that's indicative of the presence of betanin, which tends to be red or pink in neutral to acidic solutions and violet in basic solutions. However, that's if the pH doesn't get too high. In this case, I'm going to add some one molar sodium hydroxide solution. And in that case, we get a beautiful yellow color that's developed. The reason for the yellow color is that at high pH, Betanin is cleaved into the anionic form of beta-lamic acid, which is yellow in color. Now, betanin is not particularly stable. It oxidizes in the presence of oxygen in a process that's catalyzed by metal ions. Let's see if we can observe this happening in our solution of berry dye. Just going to add a little bit of our dye to each of these two flasks. And then to this flask over here, I'm going to add some copper 2 sulfate as a source of metal ions. Note that the copper 2 sulfate is blue in color. We'll add it to this flask. Give this flask a quick swirl. And we immediately notice a color change. And that color change is indicative of betanin being oxidized. And once again, that's indicative of the berry dye containing betanin. It's interesting to note that this oxidation can be observed in foods that contain beet juice color, such as this one. Beet juice color is often found in dairy products. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to try to add a little bit of copper 2 ion to this flask over here and see if we can't observe any oxidation of the betanin contained in the beet juice color contained in the food. Well, it sure looks like that pink color is faded, doesn't it? And that's an indication that this particular product contains betanin in the dye that's used to color the food. I hope you do some of these experiments on your own. If you happen to do some experiments with the berry dye contained in Color Nature food colors, I hope you share with me some of your results. Happy experimenting!